Hi everybody, today we are back on this tractor. If you guys haven't seen where this tractor came from and what it's been through to get it where it is, make sure you go back in my channel and uh, check that out because this tractor amazed pretty much everybody, including myself, in the fact that we were able to get it running after sitting 25 years. And it had a locked up motor when we started. And it was in the middle of the woods on a mountainside. So today we're going to drop the oil pan and see what kind of carnage is going on in there because there are dents coming out from the inside of the pan. There is horrible noises that it made when we first got it going. There was a lot of water in it when we first started messing with it. And we got to know what's going on in there. And I know all of you guys have been waiting a long time, far too long, but the weather hasn't been holding out for me to be able to do this. So it's finally nice enough today. We're gonna drop the pan and see what's inside. Also a little sneak peek. There she is. That's that's the new combine, new to us anyway. Um, more details coming on that soon. It's a 1640 International, has the 5.9 Cummins in it. All right, the hole to drain is right there. I forgot how much room there is under here. Oh, it's got, that's an AC compressor. That's cool. This thing had air conditioning at one time. It may never have air conditioning again, but you know, I also have, we got a fresh shipment from AgriLine Supply, or AgriLine Products, sorry, AgriLine Supply is a separate thing. AgriLine Products came in today. Shipping to the US, it was here in like 12 days, which is pretty good for England shipping things to here. Um, wow, that differential is large. Um, yeah, there's a ton of room to lay underneath of this thing. Like, that's our high clearance tractor there, and uh, it's like the same. So, the wrench is inch and an eighth for you guys who were wondering. Um, it was, it was thought that it was an inch, but it's not. Let me make sure I'm lined up here and I don't make an extra big mess. Because I don't like extra big messes. Because the extra big mess is going to be on me. Okay. Actually, getting the pan bolts out might be more difficult on this than the other ones because of this front differential. It's not going to be hard to get the pan out. Oh, I completely missed the bucket. It's getting very heavy. I mean, it, it's black looking. That's good. I don't see any uh, metal on there. I have a feeling one bucket ain't going to do it, so I got a second bucket. Here's my wrench. Better be ready to shuffle buckets here. So as it's finishing draining down, I pulled the stick out because I wanted to pull it before so it didn't like, just, you know, slowly glug. But uh, it didn't matter because the seal's not that tight on the top of it apparently. She was low, not real low. It is like 50 some degrees today, so the oil ran off the stick fairly quick. But uh, it was definitely low. And uh, there's a full bucket, plus a little bit of any other bucket. So the bolts are a 9 16th head, and there are a lot of them. Most of them you can get to with either an impact or a ratchet. There are a couple up here behind the, and above the differential. I'm not sure if I can get with those. I may have to get something else. Um, but I got a coffee can because there's a whole bunch of these bolts and I'm going to get them knocked out. So once you get the regular pan bolts off on the back of the pan, there's four of these little 12 point bolts, which are three eighths. This one doesn't have all of them. One of them is a hex bolt. And then there are four of these which take a 15 16 wrench and i think they're 5 8 but i could be wrong for the thread 
Um, should, looking at this, I should probably drain this housing because it's, it's dripping now that I have cracked all the bolts loose out of here because unless your tractor has the cast oil pan, it's the stamp pan and then there's a cast like half moon piece that goes here. Um, it's been a while since I've done one. I don't think I've ever dropped the pan on a power shift before. And I'm pretty sure there is oil like where your clutch would be on a regular tractor. So I have a feeling I'm about to get wet. But I could be wrong. The transfer case looks like it holds a lot of uh, a lot of fluid though. So hopefully most of it's, you know, down down there and not up here. But I could be wrong. Might get wet, might not. Let's find out. Well, that's dripping a bit faster. I have all the bolts out, I think. So this is the moment of truth. I got a rawhide hammer and a screwdriver. Let's see if it's going to pop loose. Some of these old gaskets just don't want to let go. Even though they leak, they don't want to let go. And I haven't figured it out yet. Boy, am I glad I was sitting at this end. Because, uh, apparently, that does indeed hold oil. Or it was there, anyway, whether it was supposed to... Oh, no. Some of that stuff, I'm hoping, is just grease that's been rehydrated. Because that looks nasty. I can't really see much through the crack. There is a breather pipe for the axle. That might be a little bit difficult to uh, remove the pan from around that. Oh, I can see the, the ring gear now. It's a little chewed up. Um, I'm hoping, well, I'm not hoping, but I'm also hoping at the same time. This would, for whatever reason, even when we had it broke free, sometimes it would lock up for no reason going backwards early on. And these had a tendency to either break starter nose cones or break ring gear teeth or something. I think it was starter nose cones. And the piece would fall down and wedge in the ring gear and the bell housing somewhere. And we're wondering if that wasn't what happened to this at some point. And it also had a really weird rattle sometimes coming from that general location. So we'll take a look at that. I'm going to try to grab this cast iron piece before it you know, somewhat removed itself before it throws itself in the bucket and soaks me. Oh, it's on that side. Okay. I think I can still get it from here. I may have to put the camera down. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. Oh! This did have something exited at one point because that's solder. There is a lot of not happy juice in there. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all being what came out of there the first time, though. Wow, there's like fibers and things in there. Ooh. Oh, that's crunchy. It's crunchy. I don't know what that is. I mean, I'm sure there's rust in it, but... I'm going to go wipe my hands off before I touch, hopefully, the clean crankshaft and stuff. All right, now that I have cleanish hands, I'm back with a couple of paper towels here. So that's where the oil level is sitting. That looks, I mean, close to where it should be. I'm going to get under here and look up. Boy, you can tell where everything was sitting on the cam, but... Why are the bottom of the rods ground? I don't recognize that being done before. Everything looks... Actually... Okay from down here. I can't really see the bores. Yeah, you can see that spot on the cam there. Cam looks good. Um, it's hard to tell the bores what they look like because 
It's at like center of the stroke on every single one. But the rods are all where they belong. There's two. There's three. There's a four. There's five and six. Everything looks good there. Now, what what this might be here is some of these had uh, a spray of oil from underneath, like piston squirters or something they call them. And I don't think I've ever been into an engine that had them. I don't know if the engines that had them had the bottoms of the rods ground like that. I don't know. Oil pump? I mean, there's a surprising lack of junk stuck to that. I mean, there's a couple pieces. Other than that, it's actually quite clean. Okay, I'll get up here and look at this gear. It's actually quite hard to stay in this position because it's like not quite high enough to sit up the whole way. Teeth don't look chewed up on it. Again, there's a rust line on the one tooth. You can see where it was sitting. But uh, it's a little bit of wear in the bores, but not, uh, not bad on the one and only one that I can see. Okay, here's the test. No play. That's front to back. No up and down though. No front to back. I can't reach those at the moment. Gotta re gotta change my angle here. Front to back. No uh no side to side though. That one's up. Again side to side. No up and down. She might just need an oil pressure gauge. All the tack drives good. So that little gear up there. Right there. Point to it. That little gear there is plastic. And it drives off the cam to drive the tachometer. And a lot of times on the old, these old ones, they're junk. They've broken already. That one appears to be in working order. I don't remember if the gauge worked or not. I don't know if I can reach up there to one. One feels good. Huh. Oh, oh, no, this motor did have catastrophic failure. Oh, no. I, I bet these are different rods that had been ground or something. I bet that's what happened. So that was the original pan because that's catastrophic failure on cylinder one. And that's right where the hole is. Oh, I wondered because I thought maybe it's just a junkyard pan. You know, maybe they, they ran over a stump and ruined the pan. No. So it's a fairly fresh motor that just got parked for 25 years. And it probably is stuck or was stuck because it wasn't long after it was fixed that it was parked, probably. And uh, if you park an engine that hasn't been broken in or. Um, hasn't been run a long time they will get stuck easy and I guess just 25 years makes it tighter than tight wow that's impressive that it did not exit the block I would have loved to see what happened to that rod they may have had to get another rod I can't see that looks like it says two but so does that one. So I'll bet you that rod's out of a different engine. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm going to pull the number two rod bearing open. I'm going to open up the rod. Stick the plastic gauge in there. Tighten it back up. Check it and see where it's at. Dad came out and did some inspection and he thinks that everything looks good in here so far um we're, we're really thinking that this was recently rebuilt and then it got parked so we're going to take a look see then what the numbers have to say here 
on the plastic gauge. Now let's get this rod out and check out the bearing. So we have the number two rod cap off. The bearing has a bunch of pits and stuff in it from sitting with water in it. It still feels smooth though. They're not very big pits. I mean, they look big, but they're not deep. Um, the chamfer on that rod is not good. Like somebody didn't know what they were doing when they were doing that. And also, see the line there? And there's a line on the other side there. That line is where these bearings have been squished and worn funny. Because if you look, they are slightly proud of the cap. So we can get it to focus there. You can see they're slightly proud of the cap. And so it would have squished them when you tighten them up and forced this here out to wear away. There's also one stripe of copper there on the edge showing, which isn't normal. Um, another thing, if I can pop the bearing back out quick here. I guess I can't because it's just kind of stuck in there again. Underneath here, there's a bunch of marks like somebody reconditioned, in giant air quotes, these rods. Because there's like boring lines in there. Down here in the cardboard. and see if I can knock it out. There we go. So, you can see there's lots and lots of lines there. So somebody has slightly decked these here, I would say, and tried to bore these back out, but they didn't do a slow finish pass and left a bunch of streaks and lines, which I suppose, yeah, it would work. It's not like it rides on that, but it's something, something has caused the bearing to not wear very good. So we're probably going to put a set of bearings in this, but we're going to check the crank and make sure it hasn't been ground or that maybe it was just ground on cylinder one is what what we're thinking being cylinder one had all the issues so i'm gonna pop this rod up a little bit and get in there with my with my micrometers and check it so there's the top bearing you can see it's got some wear on it and then some more pitting there it's odd it's only worn on the one side over there there's nowhere you can distinctly see the line there um, I measured the crank and it is, I'm getting two inches, 975 to two inches, 980, which for Harbor Freight micrometers, because my good ones are at work, um, that's, that's okay. Um, and this one I can read a little clearer. It says three, six, three, five CP. ST, I'm not sure what that means either. And then 020 US. So I imagine that stands for uh, 20 thousandths. So guys, here's where we're at. These bearings, they were running. The thing had oil pressure. They feel good. I'm going to plastic gauge it and see where the numbers are at. The crank has been ground 20 under. So these are... These are 20 under bearings. Um, looking at the cost of mains and rod bearings for this, they're kind of expensive, but not really expensive. I don't remember what the actual numbers were. Dad didn't say. He just said he looked at them, and for the time and money it's going to cost to do the bearings in this, it's probably not worth it for this tractor. That's how the plastic gauge works. So you've got your paper thing here you want to cut a piece about as wide as your bearing and then you want to on your little rope piece here so it kind of looks like dental floss it's really soft plastic so you want to be very careful with it so lay it across your bearing like that and you'll put it back together torque it down, take it back off, and that will squish out to, there's your metric sizes, depending on how wide that squishes, is how tight your gap is. We're guessing it's in the two to three range because that's where these run, meaning it's slightly used. 
So we'll get it to sit right in the bottom there good. Put that back up, torque it down, and see what she says. Well, there's our mark, but it uh, got stuck up here. So, see the green line? That's our plastic. And we'll get our handy dandy paper. Nope. We don't use metric here very often. And as a machinist, I almost never use it. So, we will gauge this. So, looks like... Uh, So, be one if it was there, two if it was there, or one and a half there, two, we're looking like three there. So three is just the white. Got the small white there. So if you guys can see, it'll squish to one, one and a half, thousands, two, and then three. We're saying we're about three for this engine, that's what it needs, being their used bearings. So we're good. I gotta scrape that off there now. Pop that bearing up slightly off the crank on top. Put some assembly grease in it. And then I gotta clean the pan and this mating surface. And that mating surface back there because there's this little wedge looking guy that uh, needs to get sealed up too. I just scraped out the pan, cleaned it out for the most part. Nothing major in there other than there was like one pine needle in there. Because if you guys recall, there was no dipstick in the hole when we got this. There was just like a spray paint lid or something over it. I forget what exactly it was. A little thunder rolling in the background. I just started scraping this and what did I find? That's a weld. It broke the timing cover when it crashed or whatever happened to it that is clearly a weld so uh very interesting anyway back to cleaning you guys think it's gonna rain luckily the way it's blowing i'm staying dry for the most part i'm just getting splattered from over there a little bit I did take a look up behind the flywheel there, and there is no metal that doesn't belong there. So that's not what was making the funny knock noise when we were first getting it going. I don't know. There's no starter nose cone in there that I can see. It's extra. There's one piece sticking up there, and that is like a magnet on the drain plug, I believe. Well, I got all the gasket surfaces cleaned up on the bottom here. It's climbing around the cab, spraying things with some penetrating oil and the three-point hitch lever and one of the remotes lever, remote levers is moving again um, the third and fourth gear power shift or manual for the power shift is stuck again but I got some oil on it I was pumping the brake pedal and uh, I knew when I put it away it didn't have any brakes I wonder why because it's empty um, so I guess I will have to add some more hydraulic fluid back to that before I go and attempt to bleed the brakes. I don't know if it just leaked out or if there was still air in the system that worked its way to the top. <clears throat> Storm has passed. I've had dinner and I got this thing cleaned up pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect because again, there is a little bit of gunk still inside that engine. There are five solder repairs here. And they don't they don't look too bad i mean i've never dried solder in an oil pan but one it didn't leak because there was still oil in it and uh well, they look relatively smooth so there's that there's a couple dents there still and then uh up there something bad happened up here i don't know if that was from the pieces of rod hitting but i imagine that i think that's the front of the pan had something to do with the uh repaired timing cover and a couple more dents there a couple more on the side nothing really over here actually that one's going in but there's that nothing else major bad that i've found in the oil pan 
I mean, some little rust bits. Um, the rust was actually creeping in around the gaskets on this thing. And uh, I wiped it out, wiped most of the, the chunky stuff out, hosed it out, let it dry in here for a little bit. And uh, I found a pine needle and some rust, no, no big metal pieces. So they did get it cleaned out. Unlike that one that they just left the timing gear teeth in the oil pan. I, I don't understand that. But anyway, there's that. I still got to clean up the little bell housing piece there. So I got the oil pan all cleaned up. I initialed it and dated it so if somebody else in the family or somebody else entirely or me in 20 years or whatever, get back in here, I can know when I had this apart and cleaned this. Um, I'm going to take some silicone because we don't have one of the gaskets right now. This is Permatex Ultra Gray. I do not have a Permatex sponsorship, but if I did, that would be really cool because we do use a lot of their stuff. Um, so I'm going to silicone that all up, get that back up under there, and then I'll kind of push it up with bolts in my hands and kind of hang it there. And then I'll get some more bolts in and squish it up. And then I'm going to put that on after that, I believe. Which is going to be interesting because you're up over top of the differential. But we'll get right into it. Well, our friend the rain's back. Took about seven gallons of oil. I went ahead and wrote that on there, and I wrote the date on there and the hours on there. That way, if we ever think to ourselves, huh, I wonder when the last time that was done, there it is. Um, and the same thing with the capacity. Oh, I don't remember how much that holds. The internet sometimes has the solution, sometimes it's wrong. It's there. And I'll always trust the dipstick over whatever somebody says, because you might have a weird oil pan on something. Or like this one that's been dented and customized. It could make a little bit of a difference. I'll always listen to the dipstick. And then if it's still acting weird, then just give it a little more and see what happens. So most of the filters I've ordered have come in. Still waiting on the air filter. Oil filters are here, fuel filters are here. I'm not going to worry about anything with the transmission at the moment. Um, it felt probably as good as it's going to feel. I got the old or old oil filters off, and I was able to spin them by hand to get them off with just a little bit of elbow grease. They weren't too bad, which is very surprising. Um, as tall as those filters are, I'm going to pre-fill them. Not clear to the top, but most of the way there. That way, you know, it doesn't have to crank so long without oil to get oil into places. And because it has sat all winter, so there's not like it. It's not like it ran yesterday, and there's oil slap up on everything. And, you know, I, I had the oil drained out of it for, oh, a month now or so while I was waiting on filters to come in. And while I was doing the work on inspection inside of it. And it's getting to be springtime and I'd like to get some sort of work out of it. Whether that be skidding logs or maybe I get the remotes to work and put it on a disc. So, let me get some oil on it and get it moving. Next thing on the to-do list, get it back on its own fuel system. Now, I'm going to crack this open. This has twin tanks on it, so there is a uh, drain on both sides. I'm going to crack this loose and see if water or green stuff or algae chunks or black stuff or nothing at all comes out because I really don't know what it's going to do. Uh-oh. That's not good. I'm pretty sure it had fuel in it. Take a look and see if we can see some... I see scuzzy stuff. Can't see all that well. I poked it with a stick. And now we got nice... Half decent looking fuel coming out of there. Come on, please screw back in there. This is hard to do on camera because it's also running down my right arm now. Uh, I hate fuel in my armpits. 
I think it's pre-sulfurized or, or low sulfur diesel too. Because it smells different, but it doesn't smell like it's got water in it. And so that black stuff on the bottom is kind of a good sign because it means this stuff settled to the bottom and it's not like clear full too because I poked it and then it cleared up within, I don't know, five seconds. It was a little bit of like grayish brown stuff and then boom, cleaned right up. Um, the wings and the bottom are broke off the other one. So I think I'm going to have to unscrew it up here. But being the way those work, I don't know that I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to run off of this. And it's got two tanks, which are huge. So I think, think we'll be all right. I mean, there is fuel in there. I'll go around to the other side. I don't remember if this has two fill caps or not. Oh, it does. That one's a bit fuller. Not by a lot. Seeing how there's not tons and tons of rust in there, I think we're good. We're going to run it with fresh fuel filters and see what happens. After lots of other tedious little bits of working on this, such as like cleaning out the cab, uh, putting a plug on one of the fuel lines, and uh, some various other cleaning up, scheming, and checking on things, adding a little hydraulic fluid to it. The battery is in. And it's time to crank it for 30 seconds, I believe it states, after an oil change with no fuel. Then add the fuel to it, fire it up, and drive it. I'm pretty sure I don't have brakes still because for some reason today, I cannot find the brake bleeder. I looked in the book. I looked down there. I cannot find it. I don't know if during my cleaning I knocked a bunch of dirt down on it and I can't see it anymore or what. But I'm not going very far very fast because um, second manual is the only one that will let me go in at the moment. Because three and four, that shaft's stuck and one's just not lined up. So let's get after it. So fuel's off. That should be enough. I'll give it like a quarter throttle. Come on, girl, you got it. Give her some more throttle. for a second. Okay, so it liked go juice that time.
that's a pretty decent circle. Even just in front wheel steer. 